Welcome back everyone to this week's technical. These technicals, if you're new to the channel, are short, hopefully snappy videos covering one specific technical topic related to farm animal health each week. The topics are normally either requests, questions I've been asked out on farm, and sometimes they're just topics I think farmers would find interesting. If you like this channel, don't be afraid to give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment with some feedback, and if you're a new viewer, don't be afraid to subscribe and ring the little bell next to the subscribe button to get notifications for new videos. Let's start this topic. We are storming through our little mini series on the different classes of wormer products. And today we are on the third group, also known as group three, or the clears or macrocyclic lactones, or three mLs. The active ingredients in the group three wormers belong to either a group called the avamectins, so that includes abamectin, or ivermectin and so on, or milbomycins, and that will include moxidectin. Where you see an active ingredient or a brand that ends in ectin, the chances are you're looking at a group three wormer. Of the three major worm groups, group threes are the most recent introduction. They were introduced onto the UK market in the 1980s. They come in oral, poron, and injectable preparations. On spectrum, they are broad spectrum when it comes to the gut roundworms. No product, as far as I'm aware in the UK, is licensed for liver fluke or tapeworms, although you may find clear wormers in combination with a flucicide occasionally. But unlike other groups of wormers, they do have ectoparasitic properties. That means they kill external parasites, including sheep scab, which we'll come to later. For some of the 3mLs, the dose rate for sheep scab versus roundworms can vary. So if you're going to use a 3mL for sheep scab, be sure to read the data sheet or ask your vet. Just clarify before you go to the trouble of treating them. And there's another caveat. We'll come on to that shortly. In terms of duration of activity, some 3MLs have an extended duration of action. That means they have persistency. They carry on working for a given amount of time, not just on the day that you've given them. In particular in the UK, moxidectin has long acting preparations. And one of those is very long acting. Whether this is a good thing or not, it's not so clear. That's one for a future video. When we're talking about resistance, it's also pretty common for the three MLs. When we look at the data from different places, it does vary. It doesn't tend to be as widespread as white wormer resistance, and it's probably on a par with yellow wormer resistance. It looks to be somewhere between 20 to 65% of farms having clear wormer resistance. That's probably related to the fact that white wormers are older and so worms have had more of a chance to be exposed to them, not some inherent superiority of the yellow or clear products. I mentioned the use of 3mLs in treating sheep scab. Of course, any use of a product that is gonna expose worms to 3mLs is going to increase the likelihood of resistance because we're increasing exposure. So when we're choosing a sheep scab treatment option, that needs to be a consideration. And guess what? The continued use of injectable 3mLs has led to resistant sheep scab. That's the caveat I was referring to earlier. And in these cases, OP dips are really the only course of action left. This conflict in the use of 3mLs between sheep scab and gut worms has no doubt contributed to resistance in both classes of parasite. As ever, when it comes to cattle, our data on the prevalence of resistance is less clear. Resistance is probably less common, but certainly not zero. Finally, all worming products have off-target activity against other invertebrates. That includes dung beetles, other terrestrial and aquatic bugs as well. Now, these bugs aren't just nice to have around. They perform quite important tasks that relate to soil health, greenhouse gas emissions, water infiltration, and so on. Generally, 3mLs are thought to be amongst the most detrimental groups to these invertebrates. So whenever we use them, we're going to impact those invertebrate populations on farms. So when considering the use of a 3ml, we need to consider the impact on the farm's invertebrate fauna. There's a great organization dedicated to this. I've linked them in the description. They're known as Dung Beetles for Farmers. At the risk of sounding like a broken record, the best thing you can do is to get a baseline. Know what you're working with before you make any changes. Finding out if the worms in your sheep or cattle are resistant or susceptible to 3mls, along with the other groups of common wormers, 
is going to be a very sensible option. Talk to your vet about doing some sort of efficacy test like a post drench check or a fecal egg count reduction test. Investing in this sort of advice is going to be worth it. That's it for this one. That's three out of the five wormer groups covered. Soon we are into the exotic fours and fives. Stay tuned for those. As I say, if you enjoy that one, you want to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button, ring the little bell next to it so you don't miss any videos. Give the video a thumbs up and leave me a comment with some feedback. I'll see you next time.